we finish drilling the quarter inch. And I am using the drill feed up here rather than raising the table. Now we're ready to switch sizes again. By the way, be sure and wear your safety glasses and observe all safety procedures when you uh, do something like this. And I am using a little Alumatap on there. It seems to help quite a bit. And uh, I had to lower the table quite a bit now in order to do this. And now I believe that I'm going to lock the spindle and I'll feed the table up. Now I put the machine in back gears because we want to run this at a slower speed. And remember when you got your uh, bridge board in back gears that necessitates running the motor in reverse. And now the final size. I'm reaming 13 sixteenths and the machine is in back gears running at uh, slow speed and I'm going to feed up with the uh, knee crank. And now we have hopefully, hopefully, hopefully an accurately reamed hole, 13 sixteenths. And just as I finished, uh, my uh, grandson Jordan came in. Hi, say hi, Jordan. Hi. And he doesn't have safety glasses on, you'll notice, but I had just finished uh, the operation here. So it's uh, the eve before Easter, and we're getting ready for a little party here, and uh, old Tubal Cain's going to quit for the night. So it's so along for now. Well, there you have it, reamed hole, and uh, that's the needle bearing that'll be pressed one into each side. I won't put them in yet for fear of getting chips in there because we've got more operations to do. And uh, next I'm going to uh, drill these uh, mounting holes, four of them, and I've already laid them off and uh, pecked them a little bit with a small drill, but uh, it's very difficult to drill from the bottom side, and that would be the more logical way to do it, but... Uh, there's no way to hold it and I don't want to do it freehand, there's no good way. So I'm going to use it, uh, drill it on the drill press with one of those big long drill bits that I showed you one time and that's going to work quite nicely. It's a quarter inch bit and we'll go, just go all the way through and we've got plenty of clearance up here and we're not going to hit anything. So I will drill those four holes right now. I hope I'm not showing you too many boring details. Here's the setup for milling the half lap on this casting. I've just uh, machined off the ends so they're parallel with the base. And now we've got a layout line right here and here. And we're going to mill that down. This is three quarters thick, so half of that is three eighths. So we're going to mill down uh, 375 thousandths across there. And I'll show you that in a minute. That's my grandson, nine years old. He's going to be a master machinist someday, so he's taking one of the cuts. All right, real fast, Jordan, up to the other part. Slow her down, slow down. All right, come in at 50 inches per minute. Thank you, Jordan. I don't have a power feed on my mailing machine, so today Jordan is my power feed. Rapid travelers, Jordan. Rapid travelers. All right, slow her down. This is the finishing pass. This is the final cut. This is going to be a half lap joint. Thank you, Jordan, Mr. Power Feed. Well, I poured a casting about an hour ago. Took the cope off already and trying to do this one-handed because I'm holding the camera. So we'll knock this sand off and see if this one turned out. You know, not every casting turns out. Hope there's no shrinkage on here. This is 
the riser, the sacrificial riser. Stick it outside. Ah, the grass is greening up here in Illinois. Isn't that nice? Another week or two we'll have to mow for the first time. The casting looks good so far. This is the top part of the pedestal or upright. Now I think I'll cool it off a little bit. Still too hot to touch. Take it down into the shop and uh, saw off that riser. It took me two tries, I'm ashamed to say, to get a good casting for this particular pattern. And uh, I talked to you a little bit earlier about the need for a riser and trying to control shrinkage. And I got a little stubborn on one of these and thought I could get away without a riser. And it had been gated right here as you can see and uh, but I got major shrinkage in this area and I went ahead and drilled that thinking maybe I could use it but look at the shrinkage that we got right here and we got the almost the leaning tower of Pisa there where it shrunk and then the whole hub uh, leaned over and uh, now on this one that didn't happen because of this rather massive riser that weighs almost as much as the rest of the casting also, uh, down in here, I'm not sure it's going to show up, right in here, there's almost no sign of the fillet, and we have what's called a hot tear there, where the metal literally tore as it uh, shrunk and cooled. Anyway, i got a good casting here, and I'm going to saw that gate off here presently, and then I'm ready to start machining, and... Other than the base, I will have all my castings made and hopefully within a week or so here have an operating engine. That is if the whole thing works at all, one never knows. Notice the shrinkage up here. And this whole piece here is sway-backed. But it doesn't matter because that's waste stock. Now this is about what it's going to look like. I milled the half lap in this piece in a similar setup to what I uh, used for this. And now on the back side I have laid off four holes and we're going to join the two pieces together with uh, socket head cap screws. So I'm going to pilot drill these and uh, drill them quarter inch and then we'll transfer them onto the other piece. Then drill these holes, 13 64ths, tap them quarter 20 and then come back and I'm going to countersink these four holes from this side to accommodate the flathead. Here's the setup for drilling these holes. I'm giving you some of these details just for ideas, but uh, since this piece won't uh, set flat, there's a hub on the back side too. And furthermore, this doesn't set flat because it's a half lap. What I've done is to place the, the work on two parallels, which are, I think are about an inch and a quarter. And uh, that gets me off the table, but you can imagine that the whole uh, work is going to tip when I force the drill in there. So I'm uh, holding that with a drill press vise sitting on its side, and that, uh, that holds it firmly because I couldn't find any waste stock or anything to put under there to support it. So that's how I'm drilling it with a pilot hole and then uh, a quarter inch bit. <laughs> 